if you look at 1970, the price of gold was $35 an ounce. It's now over 1900 and it's been kind of easing off a little bit lately and it may, may ease off more. But it was a reasonably good inflation hedge uh, considering what is the risk of uh, owning gold, you understand? If you place it, my worry about placing money on deposits with the banks is that the banks cannot repay you one day. <laughs> it's always a risk that uh, US uh, investors experience with some regional banks. But if you have gold and you keep it in a safe in your house or uh, in a bank or in a depository institution, it's relatively safe. The government may take it away one day. Since they manage to lock you down, they can also do all kinds of nasty things to you in the future. And since so many people seem to be in love with communism and socialism, I, I wish these people had lived under the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. They would uh, not be en uh, endorsing socialism with so much enthusiasm and uh, always argue that the government should do this and the government should do that when it's being proven empirically throughout history that the private sector performs better than the government sector and the bureaucracy. Well, I'm convinced that over time the importance of the US dollar as a reserve currency will diminish and eventually be eliminated. It's only a question of time. The way Spanish peseta was eliminated and the way the British pound was eliminated as a global currency. They still exist in local currency. But uh, I'd say it's not going to happen overnight, but uh, we can see increasingly the trade shifting. Say in the 1960s, 1970s, 80% of global trade went through Europe and the US, in other words, through the G7 countries. Now this has diminished and more and more trade is between Saudi Arabia and India and Saudi Arabia and China and China and Brazil, China and and Nigeria and China and the rest of Africa and so forth. So the natural uh, development is that eventually Chinese and these countries will bypass the dollar and settle either in Chinese yuan or RMBs or in Nigerians nairas. Or, uh, this is natural and uh, it will happen, but it's not going to happen overnight because the world uh, reserves are still predominantly in US dollars. But they will, uh, as a percent of total reserves, they have diminished and they will continue to diminish, in my opinion. If you look back last few central bankers in the US, say, you had uh, Yelp, you had now Powell, before that Yellen, before that Bernanke, and before that Greenspan. And before Greenspan, in my opinion, the US had the last good central banker, which was called Paul Volcker. After him, the Fed uh, started to print money, they had a Fed chairman who knew something about economics that I give him credit for he is an accomplished economist but he became also a politician that uh, kind of you know wanted to reward the politicians the administration and Wall Street and so he printed money but not as badly as his successor Mr. Bernanke and Miss Yellen and so forth and Anna Schwartz who wrote the, uh, the monetary history of the United States with Milton Friedman. She badly criticized Mr. Bernanke and his reappointment as a Fed chair because she said that he's basically a money printer and nothing else. So yes, the, the Fed and other central banks, so you look at the ECB in Europe, uh, it's a, even a greater disaster than the Fed. Or you look at monetary policy in Japan. Now, the other day I got a report that said that real estate prices in Japan were up something like between 40 and 60 percent year on year for luxury properties. And inflation in Japan is, say, officially over 3 percent, but that doesn't reflect the reality. The true nature of inflation in Japan is higher and it is more like four, five, six percent. Anyway, the interest rates on 10 years Japanese bonds is still only 0.59%. So in real terms, inflation adjusted, 
interest rates in Japan are still extremely negative. And whenever you have negative interest rates, you have uh, basically an inflationary impact. Now in the US, I'd like to point out, interest rates are higher than they were two years ago. That destroys the demand of lower income recipients. As I explained, they struggle because uh, the prices, uh, the cost of living of the household is going up more than their income.